Hello everybody, it is week 14. This is the second to the last week and uh, you have a final project, but I hope you're enjoying it, I hope you're having fun. This is <clears throat> one of my favorite projects because you can be so creative and you get to break some rules, which is, you know, always delightful. So um, here we go. Let's take a look at what's going on this week. As you well know, you're working on the transformed essay. And by that, I don't necessarily mean you have to take an older essay unless you want to. You certainly can. You can take blog entries. You can take journals and play with them if you want to, to make a collage or to decide to create a different sort of whatever you want to do. Okay. But um, you can also start from scratch or start from an idea that you've been cooking for a while. Who knows? Up to you. But we're, and there's so many forms you can choose from in creative nonfiction. We're going to limit our choices to three, the collage, hermit crab, and or graphic memoir. Um, I've posted several brilliant um, examples, including some by former students. So I hope you enjoy some of those. And this week you will read, plan, and develop your, or whatever's coming next, your collage, your hermit crab, or your graphic memoir. Um, so let's cruise along. Uh, please review the prompt. It'll walk you through everything you ever wanted to know about this particular assignment. Please read your chapters, uh, a chapter in slant about innovative forms and some model essays. So let's go over this. We've got two presentations. One is a standard PowerPoint. One is a Google slide presentation. I'm just going to go over these relatively quickly. I'm going to talk about the collage essay. Uh, to start with. Um, and yes, I could make this a better presentation. Um, let's see if this works. Maybe. Okay. Um, so the collage essay. As kids, you probably made collages in your elementary school art classes or whatever, where you put clips of from magazines and tissue paper and found objects together into a piece of art. Well, this is kind of what we're doing here too, but it's thematic in a sense. You're choosing elements that aren't just random. They relate to each other and you put them in relationship to each other, but you don't, you're not limited to the standard traditional transitions between ideas. You don't have to explain in clear ways what those relationships are, but your readers will figure it out. You, know, you can do things like acrostics where you do a, B, C, D, E as starting points for your topics, and you can see how that works in a couple of sample essays. You can use visual images. You can do scraps of songs or poems interwoven with your own work. Um, you can do a bit of a poster here and a bit of a video there. There's so many ways in which you can pull things into relationship, but you want to avoid cliche. You want to avoid slapdashery. You don't want it to look like you didn't think about it. You want to show us that you thought about it. Um, so you're, re you're reassembling fragments of pre-existing images or words to create new things. The new thing has to have meaning in itself. Um, as I say, it has to have a take home message that the reader or the viewer takes away um, purposefully. Um, you don't have to use, as I say, conventional transitions, and um, you don't have to follow traditional form in terms of introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion in, this, in the traditional sense. But the reader still does need to see connections between ideas. Um, here's an example of how you might describe a place in bits and bobs, little snippets of scene, a bit of a description of a public art piece, a little movie scene, a poet, poem, um, moment on a street corner, historical facts, just piecing that those elements together to describe a place um, as an example, and so on. Um, I don't want to read every word of this PowerPoint to you. I just want you to know that there are some examples on this PowerPoint that might walk you through it. And um, these are references to some of the readings that you have in our collection. Um, but the, the glory of it is that you do have some freedom from traditional essay structure. You can be somewhat random, but you can make connections. Um, playing with ideas generates new good ideas. The point evolves and sometimes is not necessarily stated for the reader. 
the reader can walk away with something they intuit, um, something that they they bring to the conversation as well. You don't have to spell it out for them. Um, types of things that you can pull into your collage, you can bring in your own writing, academic articles, memes, cartoons, graffiti, Hallmark cards, literature, cereal boxes, emails, um, bits from your old blogs or journals. Um, you want a mix of visual and text. Um, if you want to embed videos or music, that's great if you can pull it off. Um, all kinds of things can go into a collage, which can be loads of fun. So I hope, it, hope you enjoy that. Um, various topics that students have used in the past. Um, so many things. Aliens, really fun. Um, rap music, fall weather photography, the goat. I don't remember that one, but it must be fun. Um, and so on. You can play with all sorts of themes. Um, so you will, will want a theme, whatever it's about. A variety of material, original and found. Um, something substantial, substantive. You don't want just random pointless filler. Everything in it has to have a point. Um, you're not just, it's not just toothpicks and leaves from kindergarten. You're really thinking about what elements are going in here. Um, do check your spelling and all that good stuff um, so that your reader knows what you're going for and you're shooting for a minimum of two pages. Don't go too crazy. Some people have turned in 15 page collages. That's overwhelming. Keep it focused, um, but a minimum of two pages. Um, and just think about your world in new ways. That's what the glory of the collage as well. Is it just gives you a different way of seeing. So have fun with that. Um, the hermit crab is also loads of fun because it isn't what you think it's going to be. Um, let's see, though. Hold on. Oh, do you need me to show you? Present. Here we go. Okay. The hermit crab. The hermit crab is named um, by the authors of your textbook, actually. Uh, it's the notion that a tender, vulnerable, personal essay is living in the protective shell of another writing form. So instead of being a personal essay, it might look like a memo or a recipe or a crossword uh, puzzle or so many things. So from your textbook, this kind of essay appropriates existing form as an outer covering to protect its soft, vulnerable underbelly. It's an essay that deals with materials that seem born without its own carapace, material that is soft, exposed, and tender, and must look elsewhere to find the form that will best contain it. It's an essay within an essay. Like the hermit crab who takes on the shell of another animal, the hermit crab essay takes on the form of another style of writing, but at the heart, it remains true to its own tender creative self. Okay, so this is pretty fun. Um, so an example, Lori Moore uses the form how-to, like a, how do you build a, a box or, or a Ikea dresser, um, to meditate on the difficulties of becoming a writer. Using the second person, she writes, first, try to be something else, anything else, a movie star, a kindergarten teacher, president of the world, fail miserably. It is best if you fail at an early age, say 14. Early critical disillusionment is necessary so that at 15, you can write long haiku sequences about thwarted desire. You'll notice her tone is a little snarky, which is funny. It's great, but it's written, she's writing to herself, but she's writing to you using the you address, which is, She's kind of a, um, a trailblazer in that way. She kind of launched kind of a, I said kind of too many times, a, um, a style of writing that has kind of taken off. I said it again. Uh, we're using the you voice. Okay. Um, this essay is really great. I hope you look at it. In, it's in your Tell It Slant um, collection. Uh, the Math 1619 essay uses the instructions for a math exam to explore race. 1619 is the year, the first year um, Africans were taken from Africa and enslaved in the United States, which is pretty horrible. And when you see this connection, you'll, yeah, it's moving. So an example, when a black girl has, question, has a question in physics class about double slits, does she not ask her question and instead 
writes help on her paper next to the problem because a everyone seems to understand the new concept b she believes the students in her class will think she is bad at physics because she's black and female okay read this all right ways to think about the the um, hermit crab you can think about a budget or a crossword puzzle with clues or a business letter and mix and match with a story, deciding how much emotional energy to invest in a new relationship, coming to terms with one's own sexual identity, which was really an example in the Hall of Fame right here. Apply for a, or decline a job as a step parent, partner, student, best friend, other. You can see how you can use these forms to play. Menu, board game instructions, broadcast news report, classified advertisement, infomercial, workplace mission statement, mix and match, seeking a mate, perfect job, meaning in life, coming out, breaking up, navigating a difficult work or home situation, proposing marriage or another commitment. Can you imagine that as a, oh, I don't know, uh, coming out as a workplace mission statement or um, menu, um, seeking made or perfect job etc you know what i'm saying you can mix and match and try the different forms you probably should know what the forms look like um i'm sure you can think of more forms and continue to play if to see more examples go to patel at slant i think you'll have fun with all of this okay let's go back Okay, so this week, please read some sample essays, and I think you'll be blown away by a lot of these. Um, this is an essay, a collage essay written about writing collage essays. This is about fatherhood. It's written as, a, as an acrostic starting from A to Z. It's mostly text, so that does um, kind of blur the lines a little bit because I do want a mix of visuals and texts, but it is really well done. And so look at how he uses A, B, C, D, E, etc. to structure the piece. This is Against Nature. I think it's worth reading. Um, here are some really stunning student essays. This one is very visual. I'm just going to show it to you. You can read it on your own. In just a second, I will. Open, 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 open. Yeah, you see your, your syllabus in the background. Okay, so here's an example. See how she mixed the text and the visuals? She ended up having to take a picture of it because it's a physical piece. But see how cool that is. Pretty slick. Don't forget the reflection paragraph. This is part of the assignment where you reflect about the process you went through to write your essay. Um, disregard. Uh, this one is written in the acrostic style from A to Z. It, in, it uses songs as a way of organizing the ideas and quotes, and it'll kick your butt. It's really moving. Really moving, just saying. Um, these are hermit crabs, which are awesome. This is um, written by one of our authors from Tell It Slant. Again, her work. There's the math 1619. This one is game instructions. Pretty fun. This one is recipe for beauty. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, there's something to be said here. Um, identity crossword puzzle. This is using crossword um, clues, crossword puzzle clues uh, regarding one's sexual identity. Really artful. Really clever work. Graphic memoirs are a whole other game. Um, and this one is, I think, really striking. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, fun Home, a tragic comedy. Now, I have no skill with drawing, so I cannot illustrate <laughs> how to do this. But this is quite powerful storytelling, mixing imagery, drawn imagery, and, and words. Um, I don't pretend to be able to teach you how to do that, but um, you can look at some really great examples. Here's a shorter piece. This is, you don't have to do a great novella. You could do something a little more um, straightforward with panels um, like a cartoon. This one's a little more elaborate than I could ever do, but it's only one page. 
to give you some notion of what's available to you in your creativity. Um, so, great examples here. Then check out what you're doing. This week, your, your only big task is to reflect on your plan and on some of the readings that you've taken on this week. So um, take advice, give advice, support each other as you plan and process. You'll be turning in your final draft of your collage or hermit crab or graphic memoir next week. Um, this is our almost final week. Um, and so uh, if you have questions, worries, concerns, anything that comes up for you regarding this project, let me know. Reach out, holler, scream, show up for office hours, or if that doesn't work, uh, I'll make an, uh, an appointment with you to meet anytime. So talk to me. I'm more than happy to help you. Um, have a great week. Have fun. Enjoy the process. Thanks.